Tell us what your condition was, how long you had had the problem, and then let's start with that. What was the problem? What was the damage? What was the consequences? What was the, and what was your level of pain? Now we're gonna, see, um, several years ago I had excruciating pain and I went to physical therapy for 90 days, six days a week, and uh, I learned a lot, but later I was able to use my own dissertation about how do you, do, how do, how do you determine uh, whether or not somebody's being healed of especially pain? Because you can look at an MRI, and you can look at an MRI, and that person should not be in pain, and they, they may be in pain. Or you can look at an MRI, and they should be in pain, according to the MRI, but they're not reporting pain. There's no instrument as good at reporting pain as your own human body. And so self-reporting is real important. So when in physical therapy, they'll ask you if zero is no pain and 10 is excruciating pain, unbearable pain, what was the level of your pain? And they'll make a record of that when you start. Into the therapy, they'll uh, come back and check again. They'll see, they'll check with range of motion and they'll check pain level. Now in, you had a failed back surgery. No, you had a back problem. Yeah, it wasn't back surgery. Serious back problem, and I'll let you tell it, but uh, when there is a failed uh, back surgery involving surgical implanted material, it's a very dismal hole if it's failed the first time that it will get better. Uh, based upon the study that I found, if after you have a second surgery, you could be 10% better, it's pretty good. If you're 20% better, they think, well, that's really a, a good improvement. Uh, for our study, the prayer, we uh, usually, we start postpartum counting at 80% at better, but some, after uh, days later, within a, we check back 100 days later too, they dropped down to like 60% better, was our lowest, but our highest was 100%. And so, uh, and most of them were at least 80%, which is, it's just unheard of. And so we're, we're grateful for that. But this is amazing testimony. So Lee, tell us, what was wrong? Okay. Let me hold it for you. Thank you. Awesome. Now sometimes you guys want to get way out here. So <laughs> well, I just want to praise God, first of all, for my complete healing. Um, 100%. 100%. I came in, I decree it. I thank God for it. And I just thank you for your ministry. And I thank my church for this ministry here. Um, sure. Last, what was it? February, February 20th of 2013, I had a drop foot. Um, my lumbar herniated, I had a diagnosed with a lumbar herniated disc from a chair. That was affliction. The particular person or supervisor didn't want to order a chair for me and I'm six feet tall. The chair pushed into my back where L2 all the way to L5 was compressed. The L5, there's an S1 nerve root that controls bladder and bowel and it was compressed where it put so much pressure on my bladder and bowel I had dysfunction. Um, I kept on trusting God for my healing. He showed me, the Holy Spirit showed me manifestations of healing in stages. As my faith grew, I told the doctor, I don't want surgery. My, my God's going to heal me. Come out. And what my testimony is here because I have complete movement in my legs now. And yesterday, I had, came. yesterday I came, I sat right there and I had a cane. And my lovely donut, let's just say it's a donut, it's called a coccyx cushion that allows you to sit in comfort. And I almost didn't make it to your conference because I said, Lord, I can't sit too long and I cannot get up. And I, I was in so much pain. So I came anyway and put ice on. I guess if everyone knows me, I put ice pack on my back. And I was putting ice and I was shifting and shifting and shifting. And in the afternoon session, you, uh, I just remember, I was sitting right there, Holy Spirit touched me. I felt a wind 
and the Holy Spirit touched me and I was out. You were, you went. Yes, I did. I was out, let's just say, from here to that road. Just timber. And, <laughs> but I just want to say, it was only the manifestation of, of the Holy Spirit and God's healing. I felt peace. I felt warmth. I felt joy and contentment. I also saw a vision of what he had for me, the Holy Spirit had for me. Um, the vision was that I always had a stream of traveling the world and ministering to others. The vision was, and he told me in spirit, in talk, you will minister and you will travel the nations and you will minister to others. But I was down, but I could hear everything the spirit was saying and the spirit, the light was so strong, the warmth was so intense. The, the calling was so, so, I don't know, it's just God, let's just say, it's just so powerful. And within, I think, 10, 20 minutes, I was out laying in about maybe 10 minutes or so. No, you was out more like 40. Was I? Okay. <laughs> no, it, it, all right. At the beginning, before we even started, we prayed for everybody, prayed all the way around, just to pray to leave. You was out, I don't know, maybe, maybe it could have been an hour, I don't know. It wasn't 10 or 15 minutes. <laughs> well, praise God, I didn't know how long I was out. It was just a good rest, let's just say that. And so, I remember Pastor Randy had said, that woman that, that it was in the second row that fell out and the Holy Spirit touched, I want to pray for her. And you were over there. Yeah, I prayed for everybody you all the way around. You and came back. I came back. I said, hi, it's me. And but I was believing the Holy Spirit for complete, complete healing. Now let me add something. I didn't know anything's wrong with her. And I never prayed for healing either because I didn't know anything was wrong with her. So I was shocked when I heard about this healing because it happened without even being prayed for healing. So go ahead, tell what happened. Thank you. And so, so, praise God. So I, could, I went up there and I had this trust in God that was like, this desperation. I was like, God, only you can heal. Only you can be my surgeon. Only you can be the doctor. It's not what the Lord. lawyer says. You are, you are above all. You can do all things. But I came in there and I think, I closed my eyes and I said, oh, God, touch me. Heal me. And I looked, my eyes shut, and I was out. That night, I went home. And I rested. I was, it was just good sleep. Let's say when you have a lumbar herniated disc and it's multiple layers, I've been up on pillows, seven or eight pillows at night, trying to find a, a nice bed. That every bed wouldn't work. Uh, medicine, and I said, okay, I'm not going to be dependent on pain medicine before. Last night I had no pain medicine. Last night I was able to sleep. My range of motion is when you have drop foot, you drag your foot, and you have drop foot, you can't move. And um, last year I had drop foot, I was doing physical therapy, and it's progressing, progressing, progressing. But as I see- and Progressing, getting worse? Progressing, um, getting better. Getting better, okay. But it was with my faith, and it's the trust of God, and God healed. God healed. And I thank you for your ministry. So thank our church for our ministry because I went to a prayer breakfast and this was in December and God touched me then and every time he touched me, Holy Spirit, I feel warmth in my spine. I start dancing in the spirit. And I just to get back to now, complete and total healing now. I trust in my believer and I already know it. And I just pray that as you taught us today, your healing could be gradual, it can be instantaneous. But just keep on trusting God for your healing. Believe in him that he will direct you and heal you. You just have to have, like you said, faith like a mustard seed. Just a little bit of faith. And keep growing on that faith every day. Because when, you're lay when I was laying in that bed, I said, Holy God, you have the power to heal me. And to be able to see it today, I'm wow. grateful. And also, 
there was something that happened in the evening service to, or the morning or midday today in terms of Holy Spirit touched me and commissioned me to heal others and to be able to travel and to do things. And I learned this is that he's given me so many gifts and talents, but my spiritual gifts are most important. And what I'm thankful for is that I got to this day to do what I was called to do. Amen. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. We want to ask you coming up. One of the things is going to happen tonight. One thing's going to happen tonight. There's somebody here. You have either a problem or pain. Something's either there that shouldn't be there. Something's not working right. Or you have pain. It's in the back of your skull. It's in this area right in here on the left side. Somebody's going to get healed. Is that you? You have that problem? Now, we did not work this out. We, we, this is not a, We had no... <laughs> um, when I was 20, I had a, a, a cyst, like a really rare cyst, and it was back here, but in the skull sitting right between where all the nerves sit, and they had to go in and do surgery to remove it, but when they went in, they hit some nerves because of where it was positioned, and so there's been pain there since I was like 20, so. I believe before you get done testifying, go down, the pain's gonna be gone. I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> Put yourself to this I mean, I had no idea you had that. And all the time the Senate was just uh, Lynn Shannon, I'm thinking, oh, what is going on in my head? So finally, oh. said, somebody's gonna get healed. So it's, it's going to, I believe it's gonna be you. Well, tell us, tell us, this now, now, this is, I'm gonna ask, after a while, I'm gonna ask Dave, you and your son, and Carter, and uh, uh, yeah, you don't want to come inspect the mouth because this is yeah. We're, it's not looking for gold though. This this this. I'm having trouble believing. You know, my brain is going tilt, and my spirit's going yeah. Sorry, you didn't know I'm here. He's good. He's good. He's good. Yeah. Tell us what happened. Um, well, I came when the conference started, and to be honest, I didn't really know what to expect because I had never heard of you, and... You hadn't? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and honestly, I had been, like, dealing with some, like, conditions of my heart, so my heart had been, um, kind of hard and cold. I'm just gonna be honest. So I had been coming, but not really able to like engage and that kind of thing. And um, so I went home yesterday and kind of thinking, okay, God, like, did I really just spend eighty dollars to not know why I came? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being honest. Are you really, really good? Though? <laughs> Um, this morning I got up and was running late, so I'm rushing, trying to get my kids together and so we can get out the door, and I'm in the bathroom, like, brushing my teeth, brushing my teeth, and I, within myself, started praying to God about just asking Him to come in to my heart and remove whatever has been keeping me all this time from being able to completely give all of my heart to Him, and, um, and all of a sudden, I realized something is different about my mouth. And I'm like, okay, so I'm brushing and brushing. And I ran my tongue around, like over across my teeth. And I realized I didn't feel any holes. Now the beginning of this is back in 2006 when I got pregnant with my daughter, I got a lot of cavities, like eight, and they were really, really bad. I wound up having to get a root canal on the middle tooth, and they actually had to go in and remove like most of the tooth and then pack it with whatever that stuff is that dentists put in there. And then they filled all the other ones. And in 2010, 
somehow all of the fillings, all the everything was gone. So off and on since then, I've had a lot of infections like in my mouth. The last one was maybe eight months ago. My old sitter, Adriana Gorham, she'd know because I had massive infection. And I mean, my cheeks were swollen. I was in so much pain. And I went over to her house and I'm telling her like, I need something. I don't have dental insurance right now, but I know you have some sort of mouth anesthetic or something that you can give me to help me out with this pain and I'm she's like what's going on and I'm showing her I'm like look at my mouth and I'm showing her my teeth and where there are the cracks and where the holes are at and she's like you know and there was a lot of discoloration where the filling should have been but because they weren't for so many years and this morning I noticed that my teeth are completely whole there are no I didn't feel anything, I didn't feel anything last night, no warmth, no anything, I just woke up this morning and boom, all eight of my... Oh my God. This is amazing, Dorothy, let's just try to get a line in there. And we're not looking for gold, we're looking for... Wow. God. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. Not, there's not a hole. There's not a crack. They're perfect. There's like they perfect are. teeth. They're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we can just tell us. And here we got confirmation. Oh, okay, so she didn't want to share because she thought all people are going to believe it. But I'm a babysitter. And yes, she had many holes on those teeth. And I gave her anesthetic, you know, to kind of help. But uh, have you looked in her mouth? It looks like uh, it looks like she just got permanent teeth. There's not one mark on her teeth. It's amazing. Come on! Yeah. 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 Let's, let's, let's get an update on this back of the head. So, when I got up there, I had pain in the back of my neck. And right now, I feel nothing but peace and heat, like, running down. Even before you said it, that's why I moved away. It was like I felt electricity, like, coming up my chest and then through my neck. And then you said it, and I was, wasn't going to say anything at first, but then I started laughing and kind of gave it away. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.